Hey guys, Garrett here, and if you are building your own home, at some point you're going to have to think about landscaping and trees most likely. Now if you have a small lot, there's probably not a lot of trees that you can fit in there, but there are some landscaping things that you can do around your house. Honestly, I'm not very much help when it comes to landscaping by itself. I'm just not that terribly creative. I would suggest talking to a landscape professional, someone like that, to actually draw up a design for you so that you know what to put in place as well as how to maintain those plants. But if you're anything like me and you have a big giant yard, then you're going to probably want to put in some trees. When I bought my property, it was farmland, and thankfully, we bought it back in 2013. So I would mow it, but if there were any trees that were on the property itself, I would leave them be just to try to let them grow. And I'll be honest, I did have to actually take some of those out during the building process, and I just lost those trees. But the nice thing is I have a bunch of cedars as well as cottonwood trees, which aren't great trees, for most people, but I like them. Anyway, I had a bunch of those on the property and I wanted to keep those. They make great shade trees as well as uh, windbreaks. Well, the problem is they're not always positioned exactly where you want them and most likely you don't have enough trees. So you may have to go out and find some other trees. And of course you can go to your local home center like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, or a nursery or something like that and buy trees that are in a pot, they're in potting soil, and you just plant them. But to be honest, I think native trees are always gonna be the best bet. And so when I was looking at my property, I knew that I wanted some cedar rows on the north and south sides of my property for two reasons. One's for screening, but the second is for wind breaks in both directions. My lot is a pretty good size at eight acres, and living out here for a while, I definitely knew that I needed some wind breaks. So for us, cedars are extremely prevalent all over the place. And I knew if I had a way to transplant the cedars, then I could make these rows for myself. I'm always trying to save a buck, so I did the math. I knew that I needed to move about 60 different trees, and it was gonna cost about 100 bucks a tree to have that move. And so I started looking on the internet and decided, hey, what does a tree spade cost? Whether it's a truck-mounted tree spade or a trailer-mounted tree spade. And honestly, it ranges big time, anywhere from 6,000 generally on the low end to 15,000 on the higher end for trailer mounted ones and then I don't know 5,000 anywhere to 60 70,000 for a truck mounted one well I knew I didn't have to have huge huge trees therefore I didn't need to have a giant tree spade so one of the tree spades that I found the most of were a Vermeer TS 44a tree spade and that is one that has a 44 inch wide root ball and I knew if I got that size tree spade, I could move up to four inch caliper trees. And so I got to searching and I found one actually up in Iowa. I live in Kansas. So I had to drive 500 miles up there, got it, made it about 50 miles back and blew a tire. So I got to stay the night while one was special ordered in overnight. Went ahead and changed both tires at the same time and then drug the thing back the rest of the way that next day. Now I found mine for 4,000 bucks, which sounds like a pretty darn good deal, but to be honest, it needed quite a few things. It needed a bunch of hydraulic hoses. Uh, I ended up putting a new engine on it as well as some hydraulic cylinders. So I have several thousand dollars into that machine afterwards, but regardless, I have a brand new engine on it with a bunch of brand new parts and it works great. It is definitely not the prettiest tree spade you've ever seen. But hey, function over form. The first thing you want to do before you decide to start moving any trees, and I'm going to put a tree just right out here, is you want to call your local one call and figure out where your utilities are. In my case, this was a farm's field, and I know exactly where all the utilities are because I put them there. And this is the tree that I'm going to grab. It's a relatively small one, but It'll transplant real easy, probably eight feet tall and maybe an inch and a half to two inch caliper on the bottom. Here is a tree that is on my property already and it's along 
a kind of a hedgerow and it just grew by itself but it's a pretty nice looking tree and my wife and I wanted to move that over to the north side of our house just to get a little more of a windbreak as well as a little more privacy between me and the neighbors to the north of us. If you know you're going to have a tree spade, go ahead and start talking to everybody that you know, friends, families, neighbors, uh, just anybody. They may have some trees that they want to get rid of and you can just get them for free. That's what I ended up doing. I just talked to anyone that I could. I got some of my trees from my dad's neighbors. I got some of them from one of my best friends. I got some more of them just from a guy that I met that I was selling some tractor parts to. It's amazing. If you just chat up someone, it's funny what can turn into it. This guy, I told him I needed some trees and he said, hey, I've got 80 acres and you can take every tree you want out of there. And so I ended up taking about 35 trees out of his 80 acres. Unfortunately, I would have done more, but most of his trees were far too big for my spade. So yes, it does cost some money up front to get this spade as well as, you know, hey, if you paid someone to do it, it's gonna cost a fair amount of money. The nice thing is you can do this at your own pace. It does take some time, so budget the time. Generally, if I was going, say, 10 miles in each direction to go get a tree, it took me about an hour to pull the plug to start with, and then take it back to the place that I'm getting the tree, drop off the plug, grab the tree, and then go replant the tree again. Usually it was anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Obviously, if it's on your own property, it's going to take you less time. Or if it's a shorter distance, it's also going to take you less time. But I was able to do it at my own pace, and I have them exactly where I want them to be. Plus, every single tree that I got was free. As you can see, this tree spade makes short work of moving this tree. Once the spades are down, you just lift the thing up, tilt it back, and then you can move it right to the spot that you want it to be. And then once you reposition, you drop the tree right back into the hole that you previously made, move the tree spade out of the way, and voila, you have a tree in the exact spot that you wanted it. And in my case, it was a free tree because it was already growing just on a different spot in my property. Now all you have to do is water this tree, stake it for about a year, and potentially mulch around it, and that's it. It'll just keep on growing. The bigger the tree that you move, the more maintenance you're going to have to do to it. So even if you have the capability to do bigger trees, if you can find the smaller trees, they're going to transplant a lot easier. They're not going to have such a hard time with wind wanting to move them back and forth as well as just completely push them over. And you don't cut as many roots, so it's going to root a heck of a lot faster. And many times a smaller tree, even an inch or two smaller, will catch up to that bigger four or five inch tree that you move. Here's a cedar tree that I planted yesterday. It's probably about five and a half feet tall. And there's another one right there. Again, probably about the same height. And then there's another one, a bigger one. It's probably about a four inch caliper right at the base. Nice looking cedar tree. It should transplant real well. And as you can look down this line, I have planted a whole bunch of cedars, mainly now if you look along this line up here, those are all on the north side of my property, so those are all for windbreak. These ones along this side are on the west side of my property, and that's just to block me from the neighbors. Every single tree that I got was free, so all I have is money out for the spade. And at the end of the day, I get to sell the spade when I am done with it. I'm keeping it for a little while to make sure that if any of the trees do die, I have the chance to replant them one more time. But once that's done, I'm just gonna sell the spade, get my money back out of it, and then I basically just got free trees with quite a bit of labor that I put into it. Leave me a comment down below if this is something you guys are considering doing. I'm gonna say it's not for everybody, it takes time and it takes a little bit of skill, but it is something that was learned. I knew nothing going into this and I was able to teach myself. 
And with that said, I'm going to make another video that shows you exactly how to run this machine because whenever I was doing it, there was no video like that out there. I just had to trial and error it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel as well as hit that like button. I'll see you guys next time.